Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce to you William Bryan from the proud state of Vermont, who will give the Elks Drug Awareness Report uh, annual report. Bill. Thank you, Kent. And thank you, Grand Exalted Ruler, for the opportunity to report on the activities, the hopes, and the dreams of the Elks Drug Awareness Program. And good morning, everyone. I wish to take this opportunity to introduce you to the directors of your Drug Awareness Program. Way in the back, assisting the audiovisual folks, is Frank Burr. Frank hails from the great state of Illinois, and he is an absolute genius when it comes to computers, and he keeps us on track when spending your money, and we're always within budget. In the east, we have Joe Junta from the granite state of New Hampshire. And in the west, we have Tim Yeager from California. Joe and Tim are the newest additions to the directorship, and under the overall direction of Kent Gady from Iowa, we have the country covered and the best interest of our children at heart. In the past years, you have had the opportunity and we have had the pleasure and honor of listening to the drug awareness report given by a variety of individuals. Not sure if you remember Marin, but she was a young woman who devoted an entire year of doing a good deed for a total stranger each and every day of the year. You heard from Henry Lozano, a former presidential cabinet member who told you how important the drug awareness program was to this nation. You also heard, um, now I lost the name. Um, anyhow, uh, <laughs> you can tell I'm a little bit nervous. Um, you also heard from Mrs. Camarina. Huh? That, that's, that's a name that I did not forget. And who could remember when she passionately told you, the, uh, as being the widow of a slain DEA agent, that she was now able to come out of hiding because of the strength of the Elks? Unfortunately, I'm afraid that the report you are about to hear will pale in comparison to them. About six years ago, it was suggested to us that we have someone come up here and talk to you all about the drug awareness program and how it impacted on their lives and that it changed them for the better. We decided then that we couldn't do that. It would be unfair to ask someone to come forward and bear their soul in front of their assembly. That is, until today. You see, 45 years ago, I returned to my home in Vermont as a combat veteran from a very unpopular war in Vietnam. I came home a changed person. I had trouble sleeping. I trusted no one. I had a rage inside me that I didn't fully understand. My mom and dad were of little help to me. My poor mother felt guilty that she didn't do more to prevent me from leaving. And my dad was busy fighting his own demons from the Second World War. I really felt alone. I felt ashamed without worth. PTSD was just letters on an eye chart to me. I became a creature of the night and pretty much a loner. My life was going nowhere, and I was headed for trouble, and I was headed there fast. I became friends with a probation officer in Vermont. I wasn't one of his clients. And when I asked him about ways I could better spend my time, he suggested that I join the Elks. I wasn't totally unfamiliar with the Elks. I recall the pleasant visit I took with my grandfather to the Springfield Elks number 61. And my great-grandfather was a member of Lodge number 1494 in Ticonderoga, New York. I was proposed for membership, membership. I joined. I was initiated. But what I remember most about that evening was the obligation that I took. Shortly thereafter, that same friend talked me into becoming the Esquire for the Lodge. 
and you know the routine. Oh, it's only two meetings a month. It's fine. You'll be okay. Soon, I found myself working bingo, working dinners, working the hoop shoot, participating in Flag Day, memorial service, initiating others, and finally went through the chairs, eventually becoming the exalted ruler. It was all good, but the Elks really didn't take on a special meaning for me until the drug awareness program was initiated. I became the Lodge Chairman in 1985, and in 1992 I became the State Chairman, and for the past 10 years or so I've been involved on the national level. Did the Elks Drug Awareness Program save my life? You bet it did. It gave me a purpose, it gave me a reason, it gave me the opportunity to live up to my obligation as an elk. Everything that Elkdom stood for finally made sense, and it all came together for me. Over the years, I've had great pleasure working with program directors. Dick Herndaller, the greatest gentlemanly elk I've ever known from the state of Oregon, was the first national director of this program. He was followed by the energetic force from Alabama, Andy Millwood, and then came the intrepid director from North Carolina, Harry Tangen. Following Harry came our current director and my very best friend, Kent Gady. Each of them brought special talents to the program, but Kent brought a passion to it that was infectious. I share in that passion, and I hope, at least I hope I do, and I hope that you will too. Kent has been able to form some lasting partnerships. One special partnership includes Marvel Entertainment. Many of you have seen this, but it's worth seeing again, and I'd like to direct your attention to the screen. Imagine this playing in the middle of Times Square for an entire month. Think of the advertising cost. But what was the cost to the Elks? Not one penny. This is the kind of leadership that you have in the Drug Awareness Program, and that's why I am proud to call Kent Gady my friend. <laughs> Kent, I want to thank you for your untiring service and thank you for allowing me to be part of it. What was started 31 years ago as a grassroots effort to educate our children has grown into the largest all-volunteer drug awareness program in the nation. And it's all thanks to you, the members of this order, and the hardworking Lodge, District, and ch State Chairman. At this time, I would like to ask everyone who has ever worked for the Drug Awareness Program, with the Drug Awareness Program, or now in the Drug Awareness Program, please stand and thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. I mean, just, just look at the number of people who have stood up. And if you didn't stand and you're a member of the Elks National Foundation, you should have stood as well because without your financial support, without the great heart of Elkdom, our program would not exist. You are truly the winds beneath our wings. Now, the DAP is doing great things all over this country, both on small scale and the grand. From east to west, north to south, lodges are doing incredible things to help youngsters make the right choice, and the lives are being changed, and lives are being saved. Presque Isle, Maine Lodge, number 15, uh, 1954, entered a drug awareness float in the town's holiday light parade, handing out over a thousand pencils, candy canes, and rulers containing drug awareness messages to the young spectators who came to watch the parade. The Petersburg, Virginia Lodge, number 237, distributed more than 1,500 coloring books and 600 bookmarkers to students at the elementary schools in Din Dinwiddie County. The Lincoln, Nebraska Lodge, number 80, presented drug awareness bookmarkers to more than 3,000 fifth graders as part of their dictionary project. 
and the Alabama Elks Association held a speaking tour in the Mobile area where over 3,400 kids at four different high schools learned about the dangers of drugs and alcohol abuse, bullying, sexual abuse, and the critical link between drugs and violence. In Gershom, Oregon, members of 18, Lodge 1805 provided red ribbons to 200 high school students who attended a drug-free party at their lodge. And in Temecula Valley, California, Lodge number 2108, they hosted a dinner for the winners of the lodge's essay and poster contest, as well as for their families and their teachers. And the list goes on and on and on. I was going to read the entire list, but I was told I had to limit my remarks. I hope each and every one of you has had the opportunity to visit the Elks Drug Awareness website, Elks Kid Zone. This, my friends, is the best drug awareness site in the country. The site is designed for kids, not adults. It's a safe place for them to go because we control the content. There is so much to do at this site, so much to see, and so much to learn. Simply Google Elks Kid Zone and then follow the link. You know, we have many detractors out there who feel that we are fighting a losing battle. Normal, the worldwide organization formed in 1970 for the sole purpose of legalizing all drugs, has much more money than we do. They're better organized than we are, lawyers on their payroll, doctors in their pockets, legislators receiving their PAC money, and they have been fighting us each and every step of the way. They say we're deceiving you. Heck, we even had a member of this order suggest that we stop becoming busybodies and take up bowling instead. My honest response to that member would require me to display conduct unbecoming of an elk. But I'll tell you this, we are not going away. I personally don't care where you stand on the legalization issue, but I do care where you stand on children. The issue is not about relieving overcrowding in our jails. It's not about adding dollars to our state coffers. It's not about relieving the pain and suffering of cancer patients. This is all a smokescreen, if you'll pardon the pun. This is about our children. To normal, it's not about individual freedoms, it's about money. They stand to make millions on the sales of drugs and on treatment. I guess if you addict them, they'll come. Look to your left, look to your right, and look in the mirror and tell that person you feel that it's okay and safe for kids to smoke marijuana. It's harmless because that's exactly what the legalization movement is doing. Norma won't tell you that since Colorado has legalized marijuana, that possession incidence in their school is up 20%. They won't tell you about Richard Kirk, a Denver resident who hours after buying a package of marijuana-infused caramel candy began raving about the end of the world, went into the family safe, removed the handgun, and killed his wife, Christine. They won't tell you that 61% of the marijuana seized in Kansas this past year can be directly traced back to Colorado. They won't tell you that marijuana smoke contains 50 to 70% more carcinogenic hard, hard hydrocarbons than does tobacco smoke. They won't tell you that the Children's Hospital in Aurora, Colorado has had more children admitted, after, admitted into their ward after consuming marijuana, and six of them in critical condition the first quarter of this year than all of last year. Now, they won't tell you these things, but the Elks will. Legalization efforts send the wrong message to our kids. So, matter, so no matter what you feel, think, or believe, Remember that it's our kids' lives that are at stake. And who the heck are they kidding about karma candy? What's their target audience? 
We all remember Tobacco's friendly Joe the camel. That wasn't targeted at you and it wasn't targeted at me. And these marijuana products aren't either. In case you're wondering who this young man is on the dais with us today, he's a Vermont State Trooper. And no, he's not here because my probation officer wouldn't let me come here unescorted. <laughs> he's here because we would like to introduce to you this, this year's recipient of the Enrique S. Camarena Award, Sergeant Eric Albright. Sergeant Albright was nominated by the Brattleboro Elks Lodge number 1499, and we are extremely pleased to present him with this award at this time. Next month, Sergeant Albright will have been a Vermont State Trooper for 20 years. And for those of you who don't know anything about the geography of Vermont, Brattleboro is smack dab in the middle of a major drug corridor between New York City and Montreal, Canada. He's been a busy lad these past 20 years. He's been responsible for the seizure of over $3 million worth of illicit drugs, and he is recognized in Vermont as one of the very best in the field of narcotic detection and interdiction. Later this year, the community of Brattleboro through the Elks Lodge there will be presented with the bronze bust that you see behind us of Kiki Camarena. Congratulations, Sergeant Albright, and thank you, sir, for protecting us and for protecting our children. Thank you. And congratulations to Brattleboro Lodge for nominating that fine, this fine young man, and we look forward to making the bus presentation later this fall. And for those of you who have never heard of this ward, seek out your state chairperson and ask him or her what you need to do to receive a winner in your lodge. The Drug Awareness Program has just completed a two-day long training in our, of our state chairs right here in New Orleans. These folks will now go back to their respective states and offer training to your lodges. Take advantage of these folks. They are special people, and yesterday we took time out to honor a few of them. Our chairman of the year were Lisa Berthume from Connecticut and Steve Meyer from Idaho, and they're out in the audience. Our rookie of the year was Len Wenzel from Florida. And in addition, Rudy Peterson from the great state of Georgia was recognized as our comeback kid. And this year, we are also saying goodbye to a fine gentleman, John Cornett from South Dakota. John is the last original state chairman going back to 1983. And we wish him well in his retirement and thank him for his many years of service not only to Elkdom, but the children of his state as well. This past year, the Elk Drug Awareness Program as the official certifier for the President's Volunteer Service Award provided well over a thousand recipients with this award at no cost to your lodges. Past Grand Exalted Ruler David Carr at this convention recently recognized two gentlemen from Rhode Island with, a, with this award. Thank you, sir. Where are you, David? Thank you, David. And thank you, gentlemen, for your combined service to the state of Rhode Island. These two gentlemen provided over 60,000 hours of volunteer service. If any of you would like more information about this prestigious award, see your state chairman. As we approach our Red Ribbon campaign in the month of October, we are going to ask each and every one of you for help. With the assistance of folks from the DEA and from our great friend Henry Lozano, who really knows the inner workings of Washington, D.C., we're going to ask the President, 
the Justice Department and Congress to live up to their obligation by supporting the laws of this country. We trust that your state chairs will be asking you to send a red ribbon to, the, to our leaders, reminding them that their obligation to this country is just as serious as our obligation is to this order. Please don't let this opportunity pass you by. Make your voice heard in Washington. It's time, my friends, that we stand up and make a difference. We in the Drug Awareness Program honor our past. We're grounded in the present, but we're ever mindful of the future. Kent is fond of saying in his coaching days to his players, you either get better or you get worse, but you never stay the same. At this convention, we're kicking off two new programs in drug awareness. First, we are introducing our new comic book, Never Alone, which features Marvel's superheroes, the Avengers, and our own Elroy the Elk. This comic book is sure to be a hit with students and teachers alike. Only available in schools, not from your state chairman, this comic also features a lesson plan to help schools and kids address bullying issues and explains how bullying relates to potential substance abuse problems. We would like to thank our partners at Marvel for making this a reality, and of course, we also want to thank ENF for making it possible. The next, the next venture, and we are really excited about this, is the Elks Drug Quiz Show. Similar to a spelling bee or a geo bull, this contest can be run in every school in the country, and the potential is limitless. From a small lodge in Johnson City, New York, this program will grow only as big as you want it to. The Elks Drug Quiz can put your lodge on the map. But it won't happen without you. Nothing in the drug awareness program happens in a vacuum. New Orleans is a great place to hold a convention. I attended my first convention here in 1980 as the exalted ruler from my lodge. In all likelihood, this will be my last convention as I, as I am retiring from the directorship of the Elks Drug Awareness Program. However, as Ken is so fond of saying, once a drug awareness chair, always a drug awareness chair, I doubt I'll be far away. And there's a simple reason for that fact. Rarely has anyone been given the opportunity to work with such a fine group of dedicated men and women. Volunteers who, whose only pay comes from the faces of the children and the parents and the communities they serve. That's our passion. Drug awareness is our mission. Join us. If you want a strong lodge, get involved with drug awareness. If you want more members, good members, like Mrs. Camerino who joined, like Henry Lozano who joined, get involved with drug awareness. If you want a stronger hoop shoot program or a soccer program, get involved with drug awareness. If you want a better image for your lodge, get involved with drug awareness. If you want to do more for your veterans, get involved in drug awareness. If you want to improve your dictionary project, get involved with drug awareness. Want to really help strengthen families? Get involved with drug awareness. We could be, no, in fact, we are the glue that will hold this order together. In closing, I invite you to an open house following this session right here in the Convention Center. We'll all be in rooms 238, 239 from 1 o'clock until 3 o'clock. Come and learn more about what we do. Meet Sergeant Albright. Meet Henry Lozano. Hear more about the Elks Drug Quiz. We might even give you a door prize. Meet some of your state chairs. See, hear, and believe. Learn more about the Cameron Award. Learn more about the Presidential Volunteer Service Award. Learn more about the speaking tour. Learn more about the Elks Kids Zone. Learn how you, too, can become part of the hardest working program in all of Elkton. You can become part of the glue. 
Thanks, Kent. Thanks for your leadership. And thank you all for your kind attention.